Hello again and welcome to another video on my 1959 Ford Fairlane 500 Skyliner model build. As you can see I've had a few updates um, since I did the unboxing. I'll put a link down below to that. Um, I've got the body mocked up. The wheels have been fitted but not permanently. I still have to do some um, work on the front wheels as there's a bit of fitment issues over there. You can see I just got everything taped together just to basically have a look at it. Uh, I've done a lot of work on the back wheels to actually get them to fit nicely. Uh, as you can see, the body still touches on there. And this is about as good as I can get it uh, without me doing major work to the chassis because uh, these wheels are already touching on the chassis. And that's the only way I can get them to actually go on. Uh, without pushing the body out. So that has taken a fair amount of work. Um, basically filing down the wheels, filing down the actual shaft that comes out of the differential and so on. And also even sanding a little bit on the chassis to get the wheels, to allow the wheels to come closer in. Um, let's see, I'm going to have to do the same for the front. There you can see the wheels are still loose because they move around. I have to do the same for the front because uh, one of the wheels is still a little bit too close. But I'm thinking that here I can basically just get away with filing down this ridge over here. Let me just get something I can point with. Basically just filing down this ridge over here and that allows the wheel to move in a little bit closer. So there are a few fitment issues on this kit. Um, the original molds were done many, many, many years ago, probably back in the 50s. This particular one is, is Revel Germany. So I don't know exactly when these molds were done. So it may have been a little bit later than the one in America. But anyway. The main point of this video though is to actually show you what I've done with the engine. Air filters on here are a little bit loose. And that's because I only I want to glue it in right near the end. So I have done the engine to the best of my abilities. Um, and I'm pretty much going to call it complete. So the air filter is still loose because I I've done some work to get it to, to be further back than what it was originally on the kit. It didn't fit quite where it looked right according to what I've seen from pictures on the internet. So I went and did a few modifications to get it to sit further back in the chassis, uh, to get the motor to sit further back in the chassis, and then to have the air filter to sit further back as well. Let's have a look at that. I'm going to pop the body off here quickly. And that's just on there loose for now. As you can see, it's a multi-piece body, so I've got the stuff together with tape just to kind of get an idea of how it all goes together and what it's going to look like and how it'll fit and so on. So what you can tell me here is this, if you ever get the kit, you'll see that this over here is where it ends originally. So the air filter would sit all the way forward which once I put the body on just didn't quite look right. So I went and crudely gouged out the hole and made it a little bit bigger. That allows the air filter to move a few millimeters back. Two millimeters, maybe three millimeters back. And that gets it closer to the firewall, which looks a little bit more realistic. But in the end, it's just the model. See if I pull this off. Pop that out there and you can see that's where the motor sits. Now something I want to point out to this kit is it's not a full detail kit, obviously it's quite old. Mm -hmm. So you don't have a separate exhaust as you do with some other kits. So the exhausts end up going straight into the chassis over there. And then quite cleverly on the underside they match up with the exhaust going there. So if you had a look at this model from underneath, 
it would look almost as though it is the same piece, which is quite clever. Uh, very cleverly done, in my opinion. From the top, this part over here covers that. I forgot what it's called. But that covers it, so you don't even notice it. And here's the motor. Best motor I've ever bought. That is to say, it is also the only motor I've ever bought. So, I painted this with acrylics. I don't think you can see that too well in this. Originally I sprayed it with a silver base coat, and that is just silver from a rattle can. I did the black with acrylic, the blue I painted over the silver as well. These little exhausts are separate pieces, there's the blue on afterwards. And then I, I did the spark plug wires. I did another video on where I sourced these wires from. Um, again, I'll put a link down below. Just trying to get this thing to actually focus on here. Move that box out the way. Yes, that is where you should be focusing. So I did do another video on the source of these wires. Um, I did make a mistake here in that I didn't key them. So when I put the paint on, which is just a simple acrylic that I brushed on, um, I actually had issues. But every now and again the paint comes, rubs off. So the more I handled it, the more the paint rubs off. The red was also done with painted on acrylic and then I sprayed a coat of clear lacquer over there and that was from a rattle can. This fan, I, I lost the original one that came with the kit and turned this room upside down, thought I'd thrown it out, went outside, went to a major lot of effort to find the original fan, decided to then make my own, which I did, um, and afterwards actually found the original fan. But I put so much effort into this one, that I decided that was the one I was going to use instead. So that's my motor. With the air cleaner on as it should be, you can see it will hide a lot of the ugliness from that distributor. So how it would have sat originally is that this gap that's in the air cleaner would have sat over this um, and basically given that a gap and it lies almost directly on the distributor. So I'm going to turn it a little bit and I've seen in some pictures that the opening for the air cleaner tends to look different ways. It doesn't really, it's not super important that it points a specific direction and that allows it to sit a bit lower give the give it a bit of a gap over the distributor where the wires are coming out it also had some of the ugliness and with the way that the hood opens forward you hardly even see that anyway so there you go i think not a bad job considering my skill level and like i say the first engine i've ever built was motor didn't turn out too bad a lot of the little mishaps that I made won't be seen as it's all hidden by the, by the engine bay. So getting these wires mounted in there, so I'll go over that quickly. What I did, I don't have the small drill bit. I don't even have a drilling machine. But I don't have a small drill bit, so what I did was I heated up the wires. Um, and then basically just pushed them into the plastic and that's set in there. Once that's set, it's quite hard to get out. Uh, on the cylinder head side, I did the same thing. Um, so this piece is separate from the actual block. So I made holes in there and then eventually just glued those in and had that set in there with the heat. So that's how I got that all set up. And the wires, I had extra long so that they actually allowed me to put these valve covers on separately. So after the, after I'd done all the wires, I put the valve covers on, glue those down, and then basically just push those down, which gives, I don't think it's too bad an effect, but it looks as though it's drooping. And then you can see I also have a little wire going from the coil to the distributor. So, like I say, not too badly done in my opinion, and from the top it really doesn't look too bad. Especially if you Allow me a little bit of discount, considering it's the first car 
model build I've done in many, many, many years. So, first motor, I'm calling it done, and now I can move on to finish off the chassis, getting that ready. I'd like to cover this stuff up with styrene, which I've gotten some now. Basically cover that up, so that when you are looking in the car from the top, you don't notice those holes. That's something I'd like to do. Then I can get this basically painted and heat differential glued on, front suspension will go on. I'm actually not even sure which order I'm going to do that in. But it'd be nice to get this done, get some paint on, and then actually start working on the body and getting it to actually look like a car without all the masking tape holding it together. Hope you enjoyed that update. Um, I'll try and get a video up a little bit sooner and not take as long to actually get an update up. Um, if you do enjoy this, please leave a comment, let me know any sort of criticisms or comments you'd like to leave, leave it down below and like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.